Lady Marjorie Snellthorpe had been questioning her decision-making skills since accepting an invitation to stay in Oscar Winchester's Wimbledon home. The man was virtually a stranger. Now her car faced gleaming iron and decorated brass gates, framed by high, stately pillars of marble stone. A plaque on one of the pillars read Hallengard Manor. The gates slid apart as Marjorie's car approached, settling against their moorings with a gentle thud. Johnson, Marjorie's chauffeur, steered the vehicle through and onto the compacted stone driveway. Her eyes were drawn towards an enormous mansion visible through gaps in the trees. Edna whistled. Marjorie could see why her cousin-in-law reacted as she did. The impressive Hallengard Manor appeared and disappeared behind a row of elms lining the winding drive before finally being revealed in the distance, grand and proud. Frederick shuffled in his seat. How do you know our host again? he asked. I can't say I know him at all. Ralph and I knew his late father, Hugh Winchester, and his mother, Jasmine. It was a surprise to me when I received an invitation to stay with him. If I'm honest, he came across as a bit mysterious. Oh, I hate it when you say stuff like that, Marge, said Edna. What's mysterious about being invited to stay with an old friend's son? I'd find it odd as well. Frederick said, I don't think any of my old friend's children would invite me to stay. Marjorie was pleased when Edna opted for the least offensive response, an eye roll. It's peculiar because Oscar, that's Hugh and Jasmine's son, telephoned out of nowhere a few weeks ago asking to speak to Ralph. After Ralph died, I got a few telephone calls from people who hadn't heard, but... Rarely these days. It took me a little while to remember who the man was, but as soon as he mentioned his father and how we had met once at a formal fundraising dinner, it all came back to me. The dinner was almost forty years ago, and from what I recall, Oscar was a rather petulant young man who enjoyed lording it over people. I didn't take to him. But we hardly spoke that night, so my feelings were immaterial. Oscar was studying at Oxford back then. My recollections are of him giving the impression he was a man's man. He drank too much brandy and spent most of the evening bragging to anyone who would listen about how good he was at everything. Ralph said he would grow out of it. The arrogance of youth, he called it. Edna's head turned her way. You still haven't explained what we're doing here or why you think it's mysterious. I'm coming to that. I know this driveway's long, Marge, but I don't think we've got all day. Marjorie felt the usual irritation at Edna Parkinton's impatience. Six months had passed since the four friends had spent Christmas and the New Year together. Marjorie spoke to Frederick regularly, but to Edna less frequently so it would take a little while to adapt once more to Edna's forthright manner. Nevertheless, Marjorie had grown fond of the woman who had become a loyal friend, and she had mostly learned to ignore the brash side of her nature, as Edna meant no harm. When Oscar first telephoned, I had to break the news that Ralph was dead. He sounded upset, almost emotional, and went awfully quiet, it's not as if he knew Ralph that well. Anyway, there followed a rather awkward telephone call, and I thought no more of it. I believe he mentioned he had settled in London. His parents travelled a lot, you see. I must have told him about our upcoming visit to watch the tennis at Wimbledon, because a few days later he called again and said we must come and stay with him. Horace had phoned her a fortnight before Oscar's impromptu call to offer Marjorie, Frederick and Edna the use of his company's debenture tickets for the second week of the tennis tournament. The tickets had become available when one of his sons decided to meet clients in Australia rather than in the UK. Marjorie always watched the British Grand Slam when she could and had been delighted, as had Frederick when she asked him if he was available. Edna had been less enthusiastic, but hadn't wanted to miss out, so agreed to come. 